The Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect at the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and he watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. And then he called to his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of you know, uh, as parents, we kind of have to be on our guard at all times. In one uh, quiet moment the other day, uh, Kirsten, my wife, noticed Isaac. He was walking, it was one of those quiet moments, and Isaac had been sneaking out of the kitchen. Okay, and you know, this is like right after Halloween, so it's not like... We thought we knew what was going on here. So here is Isaac sneaking out of the kitchen, and Kirsten goes and confronts Isaac. And she said, Isaac, you, are you sneaking something? And he got a, a smile uh, come in, his, in his eye, and he said, he, he leans into Kirsten, and he says, Mom, I'm sneaking carrots. <laughs> he was sneaking carrots from the bottom of the fridge drawer. It's a good thing we don't put the candy down there. Now that's not a, a horrible thing. I've heard much worse stories. Uh, my older sister, she's got three boys, and uh, she's got one story in particular where one quiet afternoon, uh, all of a sudden they realize something was a little too quiet, and they go to find out that one of their sons had taken permanent marker to the walls, the hardwood floors, and the steps. Those quiet moments can be deadly. <laughs> well, we know that as parents, it's those quiet moments where things appear to be buttoned up, where things appear to be good, that we have to be on our guard. Because we know that not everything is as it seems. When everything appears calm, something is definitely going on. And as followers of Jesus, we're reminded today to do the same thing, to be on our guards when appearances seem good and normal. Jesus is asking his followers to be on the lookout and not assume to, that things are okay because they look okay on the outside. Jesus goes and he tells his disciples, be aware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at the banquets. Well, it's kind of an odd thing to say when you think about it. The scribes are the kind of clean cut guys of their time. They're the legal experts who interpret the law for people. And so, yeah, yes, there are these clean cut guys. If we think about it in modern terms, they'd be the guys wearing, wearing the suits, nice suits, and carrying briefcases and wearing expensive watches. And it seems odd to say, well, watch out for them. Shouldn't we be more worried about that scruffy looking guy on the corner who's holding up a sign when we roll up our windows and lock the doors in our cars? Seems like often we're more worried about the poor, starving immigrants on the border who are looking for asylum. Why should I worry about these clean cut, successful, important looking guys? Why? Jesus gives his disciples the reason. He says they devour widows' houses. 
Now you understand that part of the backdrop, backdrop of the story, part of the context of this story, is that the scribes were often put in, in charge of the estates of all these widows. Because women in those days weren't allowed to be in control of the money and the finances. And here's the irony, of course, is that it was the scribes who would steal from those treasuries. So the scribes were very literally stealing from the widows. And so when Jesus says, they devour widows' houses, that is not a figure of speech. They are literally devouring the, the property and the, the estates of the most vulnerable members of society. So if you want a lesson to take away from this, the psalm today says it the most plainly. It says, do not put your trust in rulers in mortals, there is no help. So what does that mean, though? Who should we be looking to, if not to the rich and powerful? Where do we find our example of faithful living? And for Jesus, he says, don't look to the tops of societies. Don't look to the upper echelons. He says, look down. He says, look at the people who are often ignored and marginalized. Look towards the bottom. And so in the second part of the reading today, we get this story of the widow's offering. Sometimes it's called the widow's mite. Maybe you've heard it before. Where she takes her last two coins and drops it into the bucket of the treasury. And usually this story, and I'm guilty of this too, very often this story is told in a way where we say, what a wonderful thing this widow has done, that she takes her last two coins and, and drops it into the treasury. We should lift her up as an example. But I think when we think about this story in the context of the scribes and what they have been doing and that they've been stealing actually from widows, it totally changes the meaning of that story for me. So Jesus gives this warning about the scribes and then with his disciples he watches as this woman takes those two coins and drops them into the bucket. And now when you understand where that money's going, possibly right back into the pockets of those scribes, I just want to yell out to that woman, like, don't do it. Like, don't fall for that scam. What an incredible injustice. What a heartbreaking tragedy to ask a poor widow to give her last two coins as the scribes are perhaps robbing her of her livelihood. You could argue that she should just keep them. Put them back in your pocket and walk away. See, that's the part of the story that often gets overlooked. The money should be going the other way. Right? The money should be going from the temple to the widow, not from the widow to the temple. What does our psalm again say today? The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and the widow. And so Jesus lifts up this widow as an example of faith because even if those coins ended up in the wrong place, she gives out of this abundance of faith. And those gifts are indeed received as a gift greater than that of the high priest, as, gift, as a gift greater than that of the scribes. Sadly, it all sounds very familiar. Powerful people taking advantage of the weakest people in society. And we see this everywhere. We see this, it's not confined to a political party. It's not confined to one group or another group. We see it everywhere. We see it in politics and we see it in business. Sadly, sometimes we see that in the church itself. And so our call as Christians is twofold. And the first is to be on your guard and to watch out for those modern day scribes. Be wary of those people who use prayer and religion to prop up ideologies that take advantage of the weak. Strangers, prisoners, orphans, widows, minorities, LGBTQ, immigrants, or any marginalized group. And the second is a call to be a voice for those on the edges. That we know that great examples of faith, indeed God is always there in the edges. God is always there in the widow, in the orphan, in those people of the LGBTQ community. That God is 
there. And that we have so much to learn from them, and perhaps more than we have to teach in most cases, because that is where God dwells most clearly and most strongly. Because we have a God, that is His character, who watches for the poor, who watches for the immigrant, who is with those on the margins of society. And for this God who is watching out for those people and for us when we find ourselves in that position, we say, thanks be to God. Amen.